morning, really feeling Jesus um, in a significant way, and I really do feel like he wants to minister to you um, and, and clear some, some debris, even some more debris and maybe some cloudiness uh, from our thinking. <clears throat> it's funny, I had this picture, my dad will appreciate this. Actually, what I woke, this is what I woke up to. I woke up to a picture. <laughs> Like I said, my mom and dad are going to appreciate this. I woke up to a picture, and I was, it was like a vision, and I was driving a race car. Oh, yeah. Go. So if you don't know my parents, my dad builds racing engines, and my brother races cars. And so a lot of the times, I've said this many times, but the Lord will speak to me about through racing images or visions or things. And if you ask me things about a car, I really don't know much at all. I should, but I don't. <laughs> but it was just the environment that I grew up in, so the Lord will speak to me about things. So I woke up this morning. And I'm driving a race car, and I, we're, go, we're going around, I don't know what racetrack it is, it's a circle track, and all of a sudden I come to what I saw was, and it's a really short vision, but it's just incredibly cloudy, the, the air level, you know, the clouds are dense, it's thick, because there was an accident. So, I mean, my dad's driven race cars, so he could probably speak on this even better than I. But it was so cloudy, I couldn't see, and so I'm trying to listen, to, you know, if a, a, a NASCAR driver has a crew chief that they're talking to, so they're on the headset. And so a lot of times you can't even see. And so the spotter, that's what it's called, the spotter is somewhere high with a bunch of other driver spotters and they're watching and they're talking to the driver because the driver can't see when there's an accident like that or other things and they're saying go low, go high or whatever. Wow, I really feel Jesus on this. <laughs> but now that I process it more. Because just like uh, we, a NASCAR driver, a race car driver needs a spotter, so do we need the Holy right. Spirit. Right. Oh, yes. Come on. We need the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We need his voice. When, we, when there are going to be times when we're facing things, maybe contradictions, and it is going to be cloudy. Because, and the enemy wants to cloud our thinking. But the truth of God, the word of God clears our thinking and the voice of God affirms us, strengthens us, and helps us walk through those places where we cannot see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Filtering through our thoughts. Yes. Cleansing. Yes. And so we need his voice now more than ever before. We need to be pressing in and listening to his voice, getting alone with him, getting time with him. God, what are you saying about this? What are you saying about uh, Oregon as these things are happening in California in our schools and uh, with parents? Have you guys been reading the news? Uh, parents are losing, we're losing. <laughs> yeah. Whew, gets me emotional. There's an attack on our children, right. and they're trying to take away all of our parent, all parents' voices and authority, and it's it's absolute crazy. It's crazy, and so we have to be pressing more and more and more into the voice of God, getting strategy, getting engaged in our communities, um, being a voice, being bold, being brave, fighting for parents. Um, you know, I was thinking about the. I don't, again, I don't know if this is true. I have yet to see it confirmed on paper or in like the, our local news. And I don't know, did I share this already about the family in Riddle? No. That had the child taken oh, yeah. away. That had the yes. child taken the away. The child, the child came home, this is a teenager. This was, um, this came from, from Debbie Willer actually. So it was a friend of hers and um, I think it's okay to say, I mean, they need our prayers. If anything else, this family needs our prayers. And this was a few weeks ago. A teenager came home to her parents in Riddle and she wanted to have a surgery to change her identity. And, her, and she had got caught up in some things on social media. And so her parents said, absolutely not. And then I think they disciplined her and maybe took her phone away or something like that. And then um, they took her door off the wall because it sounds like, yeah, the, her door off the hinges because it sounds like she wasn't, uh, you know, respecting their boundaries. All of that to say the authorities came and take, took her away. Whoa. This is what I was told. Again, I have not had it verified, but this was in Riddle. Mm -hmm. The authorities came and took her away, and um, it's been said that there, there is actually a place where they take a child services. CPS is taking some of these kids that aren't being basically supported and backed by their parents to 
because they're now being allowed to make these decisions and they can decide who they want to be and what they want to be. Yeah, whether they're of age or not. Right, right. exactly. There's another one too, Audrey, um, I read on Prophecy News Watch about Oregon, which is a nationwide prophetic site that aligns with the Word of God. It's like Flashpoint, if you will. Uh -huh. And the story is real quickly, um, a mother that already had two biological children wanted to adopt two more, wanted to adopt two children from the same family. And they told her because she was a Christian and she wouldn't sign this waiver saying that she would accept their transgender decision, she was not allowed to adopt. Oh. And they were devastated My because goodness. they knew the kids. And so this is Oregon that's yeah, pressing yeah. this. And they'll bus those wow. children to California to get the yeah. whole I've treatment I've heard that going. too. I've heard that too. And I've heard Washington. It's sick news. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm grieving for the families, yeah. my goodness. And I think of the different mountains. I think of, you know, there's the medical side, there's the education, yes. there's the political. Every single mountain needs the Daniels to arise, the, the warriors, the <coughs> army of God, to stand up and, and take authority and say, this is not okay. Right. Stand right. In, in the face of these contradictions for, for our children. So, um, yeah. Can I say something? Yes. I saw, or I was watching KB this morning, uh -huh. and this advertisement came on, and it was, I had the, the sound muted, but it was, uh, they were showing rainbows. Mm -hmm. Well, then I turned the sound up because it caught my attention, and it was something about taking the rainbow back.com or something like that. And they were talking about, you know, taking, you know, how they, yes. they use the rainbow and all that. From which things. side? From. Taking it no, back taking from it the back. community. Yeah. Oh, this uh -huh. is June, yes. the Pride yeah. Month. It and is. So the, the rainbow thing is mm -hmm. really. The rainbow thing is all. So I wrote that website yeah. down at home because yeah. I wrote into it. Yeah. 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 And let me know. I will. I don't know how to fight because yeah. so many people are afraid to open their mouth. Yes. Yeah. Because big government will come after you. Yes. They'll say that you're not going along with our It's true. Agenda. But here's the thing. I, I mean, there's a lot of things I've been thinking about. One of the things I've been thinking about is, okay, so this LGBTQ, and I think they've even added some more letters there. It's like I and A. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I yeah, know. the AI movement. It's a, That's another it's a movement, yes. but it's a movement. And then the Black Lives Matter, that is a movement that yeah. has literally, like, taken yes. over Portland. Diabolical. So, but when we bring those things to God, Nothing can thwart the greatest movement ever known to man, the movement of Jesus Christ. That's our movement, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so we have to continue to um, armor together, to link together. And I think that is part of why we need to be unified more than ever before. Mm -hmm. And I think that is also the, it's almost like the resurgence of the Jesus people movement. Kind of yes. like, I mean, it's not a coincidence that that movie, you know, came out in this era, in this time, because that's where we're at. We need the Jesus people to arise and uh, war and roar and come against this thing. Because um, <clears throat> I was listening to someone else talk about the black people's, the black lives matter, sorry, the black lives matter. I know we're getting a little bit political. I'm not trying to, but this really, what my heart is, is the morality of this and what's in opposition of the people of God. And so the Black Lives Matter movement downtown that is incredibly destructive, t taking people's lives, they, when they started, someone I know up in Portland was sharing this stuff with me, but I think it was around, I don't know, 2020 or whatnot, when it all began, they literally had a time that they would come every single day. They would meet back downtown Portland, they would do their thing, they would light stuff on fire, they would war, and it just began to build. And it, it's a movement. And it makes me think, well, we're that much more powerful, but we're just not coming together exactly. like maybe these other movements are coming together. Exactly. We need to come mm -hmm. together and mm -hmm. war together. Yeah. So. And each region, I was thinking about regions coming together, you know, multiple churches coming together in each region and yeah. being the force that cannot stop mm -hmm. hell. Nothing can stop hell, yeah, right? That's right. From prevailing. Yes. The gates of Hades, Hades will not prevail, mm -hmm. but we gotta come together. Mm -hmm. Right. And we have to be aware and alert. Um, one I'm sorry more. to interrupt. Before I forget, did the gentleman who made the Jesus movie? There's a movie, there's a, there's a movie came out on July 4th that he has made. Me, he's done that talks about the Lord. So it's a whole new, 
it's been it's been trying to be pushed back. It's coming out in our movies July fourth. Oh, okay. I haven't heard of it. I don't remember the name of it. Something about we read it about Charles. Mm -hmm. uh, Charles, yeah, uh, the that. gentleman that did the um, Jesus, uh, the Passion. Uh -huh. He's in it and uh, oh, as okay. he has uh, tri child trafficking. Oh That's wow. Okay. okay. One quick question, real quick. Yeah. So you know who Sean Scott is? Boyd. Boyd. Yeah. He's yes. coming to Salem. Is he July. coming back to Salem? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, I think it's it's on Facebook. I think it's July nineteenth. Uh -huh. He's going to be up at the, he's in every capital and every state. Okay, he's doing that again. Yeah. I didn't see that. That's yeah. great. I would love to go to that. So then my family. question, Andrea, is uh -huh. how do we fight this? How do we do this? I think we have to return to, one, I think we have to return to our first love, like the book of Acts. They, and that's kind of what I'm going to talk about today. We have to be on fire. The church at large, the church at large is not on fire. A, a lot of the church is bound to religion and their structures and the way they want things. They're they're more uh, they're more performance focused based. on the stage, the lights, the numbers of the church, who's coming, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, how how your friend type the thing. business aspect. How how big is our church? How big can we make it and grow it? And it's a numbers thing versus. What are we? What are we do? What are we doing? Like, what's the pot? What kind of potency? We have to forget like potent. You know what I mean? And how do we get more potent in in Jesus, in the right. Holy Spirit? I mean, how many churches? I think it's been said. I can't remember. I heard it once. The number of churches that are actually Holy Spirit filled in America, and they're there. It's a small percentage of churches in America that are actually. Holy Spirit filled and doing the works, going outside of the four walls. Their churches, um, you know, activated and they're they're moving in the gifts of the Holy Spirit outside the four walls. So they're walking in deliverance. We need deliverance right now more than ever before. We should be casting out demons, right? <laughs> Just like Jesus did. Jesus gave us that authority. Yes, yes, he gave us the authority. He said. So as I've done, so will you yeah. do. Actually, you'll do the greater things, he yeah. says in, in the end of the book of John. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the prophetic, speaking life over the kids, calling them who they are, that they are not, you know, this animal or whatever. There's a, such a spirit of confusion mm -hmm. over our children. Mm -hmm. And so we need to be, we just have to be, it's like all hands on deck, and we have to be activated in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can I activate something over you right now? Sure. Your loved sister. Yeah. Okay, I feel I have an interpretation to your dream. Okay. And um, I've done a lot of research on uh, prophetic dreams and uh, the vehicle that you are in control of. And you said that there was kind of some fogginess stuff going on and you were definitely driving it. Vehicles represent ministry move, movement. Yeah. You've used yeah. the word movement about five times. Yeah. And yeah. the Lord kept, my heart was racing going movement, movement. God has called you to be a spearhead and move this house into purpose for yeah. the community. Yeah. And we we adore your teaching, but I, we also need to honor. That is a big gift. Yeah. And it's um, a mantle that God's anointed you for. Um, I'm with you. The nights that we did prayer encounter worship, that room should have been packed. If people truly want to see yeah. a move of God, if yeah. they truly want an encounter, but I just want to encourage you, Audrey, don't give up because you. where you go, he goes. Mm -hmm. And where you walk, he's also walking. So, um, yeah, Thank you're you. called to this movement. Thank you. You're a spearhead. Thank you. Thank you. I celebrate receive that. You. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so, um, well, that was a great little opener. I didn't know we were going to go there. <laughs> but it does segue into the topic. And that really is God wants to set his church on fire. And the Lord has had me in Revelation 3, um, the church in Laodicea. So if you have your Bibles, um, you can go ahead and turn there. It's a short little passage. Oh, I can't use my phone because it is being recorded. <laughs> I have the passion, but I was thinking it might be easier, actually, if we read it in um, a new, who has NLT? So uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. Yeah, I mean, 
the most powerful thing that we have, the most powerful force that we carry is the gospel of Jesus Christ living inside of us, the good news. Yeah. It's transformational. It's transformational. And sometimes we can, as a church, get in these places, which I'm going to talk about, of like being lukewarm and have lost our fire and have forgotten what God has done in our life and the power of the gospel. <clears throat> and it's not a time to be a moderate Christian. It's not a time on this earth to be a lukewarm Christian. It's time for every Jesus follower to be giving off a fiery heat from a fiery furnace from within. And that is the love relationship that we have with Jesus, a passion of fervency in the Lord that we, we can't live without him. We need more of him. And every day we come back to his face and meditate on his face and get with him and listen to him and hear the voice of God and what he's saying uh, to you and to our nation, to our region, to our state right now. And so we can, we've got to get uh, self-disciplined in that place of getting with him daily. It's Revelation 3, right? It's Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. Okay. I'll go ahead and read from the Passion. It's a little bit different, though. Write the following, and let me real quick preface it. This whole book of Revelation is a pro prophetic book. It's a book of prophecy about the end times. I actually have, have that passage now the NLT of what you want. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Message to the church. Uh-huh. Uh, 14, right? Yes. Write this letter to the angel of the church in Laodicea. 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 Yeah. This is the message. Would you like to read it? Sure. Okay. <laughs> You're doing good, though. Yeah, but some of those words I don't know. You're doing good. It took me a few times. Me all the time. <laughs> so I've spoke this about, this is like my third time now, because I really feel like God is speaking to me about this. And I did the same thing. I was like, how do I say Leo? Okay, Leo to see I'm getting better. Leo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so John wrote this book it's a prophetic book he writes to he gets a vision from the Lord and he writes to seven different churches and so it's really a good read especially right now to go back and even start from the beginning and Laodicea is one of the seven churches that he speaks to there the revelation is symbolic and metaphoric to a lot of our churches right now in America especially this one I believe so verse 14, write this letter to the angel of the church in Laodicea. This is the message from the one who is the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's new creation. I know all the things you do, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other. But since you are like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Mm. You say, I am rich, I have everything I want, I don't need a thing, and you don't realize that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. So I advise you to buy gold from me, gold that has been purified by fire. Then you will be rich. Also buy white garments from me, so you will not be shamed by your nakedness, and ointment for your eyes, so you will be able to see. I correct and discipline everyone I love. So be diligent and turn from your indifference. Verse 20, look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Those who are victorious will sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat with my father on his throne. Last verse 22, anyone with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. So good. Yes. And it sounds even, you know, it can sound even like he's kind of rejecting, but he's, he's not. I believe the heart of the Father is to rebuke, and he's also bringing an invitation to repent yes. and to return. And so I, whew, I just feel like that is, I mean, I could even just stop right there. I mean, that is the, the invitation right now, I believe, the church at large that God is sending, repent and return, repent and return. And they were, let's talk about some of the things that this church was at. What, what were some of the things that had snuffed out their fire? They were lukewarm. They were lukewarm. Mm -hmm. But what, can you see in there or catch anything also that maybe snuffed out their fire and brought them to this place of lukewarmness? 
been frozen in the apathy mm -hmm. and fervent for passion. Mm -hmm. they, their hearts were just numb. Yes. Oh, that's a bad place to be. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they were going, what I have found as I study more and more, they were kind of, it's kind of like they were going through the motions. Yeah. Just keep going to church, mm -hmm. keep giving your tithe. Routine. Routine, mm -hmm. mundane, doing what we're supposed to do because that's what we do and that's what we're supposed we to do. Eyes off the Lord. Yeah. yeah, but not, yes, but not actually on fire for yep. God. Right. Not in that place where I bet around the room, if every single one of us shared, could share the time you found God, the time you encountered God for the first time in your life was never the same. Right. That place, that place of being on yeah. fire. They lost their passion. They lost their passion. But and think, go ahead. I think they replaced their passion for the Lord with things of the world. There you go. Too yes. involved right. in trying to be rich and yes. trying to be comfortable in the life as opposed to. Being yes, absolutely. I agree 100%. And that's in my notes as well. Especially when he speaks of that, he hits on, um, you know, something about being rich. In mine, it says a little bit different. For you claim, here it is, verse 17. For you claim, I'm rich and get, getting richer. I don't need a thing. Yet you are clueless that you're miserable, poor, blind, barren, and naked. So Laodicea, here's, this is cool, guys. Laodicea actually means human rights or self-righteousness. Wow. Wow. I was thinking offering horrors. They had so much, but they couldn't offer. And yeah. so they hoarded all the wealth, like the sister was yes. saying. It's idolatry. It is. And the idol of comfort. I'm mm -hmm. glad you said that one because that's yes. true. They were comfortable in the things that they had, the external things, the worldly things, but yet they were... Uh, barren inside, empty inside. And remember we talked a couple classes ago about our interior armor, like God cares so much more about our interior armor than our exterior armor. But look at America and look at uh, even even the American church, it's, stepped in, it's seeped into the American church. The things, like you said, the stages, the, uh, there's a very, very sad, sad story. Some of you guys may have heard of it recently in the past few years. Uh, Hillsong Church, Jesus have mercy on them. Mm -hmm. Who knows about that? Mm -hmm. The fall of the Hillsong Church. Ooh, Jesus wow. have mercy on them. Too much flesh. Gone. This right here is speaks to the Hillsong Church. And they, they were so well sought out for. Oh my goodness. I mean, they were like top notch worshipers, you know. Yes. It's amazing. You better know the word of God. Uh, yeah, a lot of stuff. It was specifically. Uh, what was his name? Uh, the, there was a pastor in Brian? I even hate to say his name, but the pastor the pastor in New York. There's a campus in New York, and there's a campus in Australia. They actually both stepped down, kind of needed to step down. A lot was exposed. A lot was exposed. So there's a lot of stuff, but um, the money thing made me think of them right here. They had. They I mean they brought. It was really just seeped in. The world was so seeped into their way of doing church and Jesus was not at the forefront. They were not on fire. <laughs> no, not at all. It had nothing to do with the word of God, period. It yeah, very impure. Very new. impure. So leads me to my next point. Here's what I was thinking about lukewarm waters. What is a, what is a lake uh, that is lukewarm become? A stagnant lukewarm? Huh. The, the fish die uh, because it grows moldy, moldy. and it's a stinky. Yeah. It becomes a Washington D.C. <laughs> well, good piranhas good are in that one. <laughs> it gets gross. Yeah. Well, no, it they gets call it a swamp because it is. Yes, it does. It becomes a swamp. It becomes a swamp. In fact, there was, I think, a, a mod was that Trump's motto: "Drain the swamp." Drain the swamp. Drain the swamp. Drain the swamp. So um, yes. it becomes a stagnant place. They were stagnant. The, the church at Laodicea was stagnant. They weren't going anywhere. They had become stinky. They also had lost their witness. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants stinky water, stagnant mm -hmm. water. What is that representing? Nothing. There's no life there. You know, it's been said, um, George Barna, they, they put out church statistics. They stay up on them, and I love going to those to read their updated church stats, George Barna. Um, they had, I can't remember, but it's under 20%. I think it's less, um, well, let me stop for a minute. Now I, I lost my train of thought. 
scratch that, I don't remember what the percentage is, but what it is is the ge younger generation, the millennials and the Zs won't come to church. A lot of them that don't come to church is because of hypocrisy, right. because right. they don't see the church walking the, the what they talk, walking out what they talk, and actually a pure bride that's on fire, that's living and, and you know, Monday through Saturday, what they're preaching and receiving on Sunday. Yeah. <clears throat> and so that is true as well with this, uh, this rebuke that the Lord is giving to the church in Laodicea. They were, they were hypocrites. They weren't living on fire for God. Their actions were different than their words. Their actions were different than their words. And God was calling them to a place of repentance and to return uh, to passionate and zealous love for God. Um, something else, another place I was thinking about, uh, you know, trying to grab some more understanding of how we get to these places individually. Sometimes where, where did our fire go? And I believe that it's when we come to places of pain, we experience pain, whether or not we're hurt by a brother or sister, hurt by a leader in the church, hurt by a spiritual father, someone who was like a spiritual father or like a spiritual mother in our lives. It could be in the church or outside of the church. Um, and we can get stuck in those places of pain. I think I talked about this before because pain, pain will speak. And if you listen to the voice of pain and let that pain lead you, you will be like the church in Laodicea. You will be lukewarm. It will rob you and it will snuff out your fire. And so really those places of pain are beautiful, can be beautiful places to turn into places of promise. Right. If you will press into the promiser and let him heal you right. of the, those right. painful things that you're experiencing, or maybe physical pain, maybe you need physical healing. Whatever that pain is, God is our healer. He is Jehovah Rapha, the greatest physician, amen? amen. So he can heal our heart and he can heal our body. And we stand on who he is. Um, the contradiction, the, that, that contradiction, whether it's pain, whether it's relational, whether it's a marriage, whether it's financial, whether it's you know a moral issue, the contradiction cannot stand against the face of God. <clears throat> Jesus has already torn down every single contradiction and that you and I will ever face. Yeah. Right. And that's the truth of the matter. That's the truth of the matter. And so we've got to be getting into his word, his presence, the intimacy, the relationship with him. Because as we do that, we are going to be strengthened in him, growing that much bigger and stronger in Christ Jesus. Where we know who we are. We know what we carry. We're carriers of his presence. I think you said that earlier. So everywhere we go, we're carrying his presence, whether it is into um, our homes whether it is into into a school if we're uh, volunteering or maybe we have kids in our school and we're going as a mom and we're at the pickup line or we're at the school event or at, in the public schools right now, uh, you, it doesn't take long to walk into the school hallway or the gymnasium and hear the F-bomb at least a few oh, times. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to be that much more on fire and not allowing our fire to be snuffed out and guarding our fire. Yeah. Guarding our fire. So if you're taking notes, I mean, these are the things you want to be thinking about. What what has the ability to snuff out my fire, even on a personal level? What is it that the enemy wants to use to snuff out my fire? How do I guard my fire? How do I keep my fire burning? What keeps my fire burning? And think about this sort of outside the box from, you know, what are the <coughs> basics, prayer, word, all those things. Yes, they keep our fire burning. But what keeps your fire burning on a personal level? Like for me, here's an example. I have become a gardener. I'm still a novice, <laughs> but I love it. I love it. And I started in 2020 and I, I mean, it can be a hard day. The kids might not be behaving. It's just, I'm frustrated. But then I get down to that garden. I walk down to that garden. I'm like, oh, Jesus is here. <laughs> and he starts speaking to me. And I'm like, oh, I love my There's garden. Life in that garden. It's growing. It's growing. You're There's berries. Yes, there's fruit. And I'm like, Jesus loves me. 
Yeah. <laughs> and everything else just falls to the ground. Like, I go down there and hide. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Oh, yeah. That's sweet. And that's your guard room. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. the clouds get to smell the dirt. Besides, besides your, your um, skin, just in the dirt. Uh -huh. Especially when the rain is just a connection. Oh, yeah. Such you know, a well, connection. Such a connection. You know, Papa made, yeah. Papa made this for us. Right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Because we were creating. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. of the yeah. connection that you have that you don't have any place else. Yeah. That is what he created just for you. Yes. Absolutely. So whatever that is for you, maybe it's a bike ride, maybe it's a walk, maybe you, I saw you riding um, a bike. Yeah, bike ride's my thing. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Maybe it's swimming. Swimming, yes. I saw you swimming at the Y. Yes. Who I knows what it. it is? Drawing, art, painting. Mm -hmm. My mom likes to paint. I'm always encouraging yeah, her to do that. That's artistic. Cool. Yes, whatever it is, make time for that. Make space for that. Be intentional. Get with God. Whatever it is that you find, that you know lights your fire, builds your fire, and guards that fire. I mean, yes, stay in, get in the word, and stay in the word too. But those are the times I love where I can just encounter him and experience him, and just be with him, and be a daughter, yeah. and not you know take off my mom hat, my realtor hat, preacher, whatever, and just be a daughter and just be with him. So those are the things that really just keep my fire burning. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the other thing. Um, that kind of goes with this and also the church is I do believe that God really wants to break off performance yes. off yes. of his church performance yes. and make it yeah and make an exchange for his presence mm -hmm. and he wants us to be presence people mm -hmm. presence yes. carriers and um, I talked about this last time I spoke on this so I don't know if some of you heard this already but God he's called us to be presence people not performance people Presence people live in oneness with the Father, and they live in oneness with one another. Performance people, like the church in Laodicea, they lived in oneness with their stuff, right? Mm -hmm. They weren't necessarily living in oneness with the Father and oneness with one another. They were they were all about their stuff okay. and, and doing good and checking yeah. off checking the off boxes. The yeah. So it's more about external, maybe even more of a, a kind of machine-like approach with God or like a distant relationship with God, like he was a master and not uh, an intimate friend or a father. Um, yeah, I like what it said, that he would have dinner with his friends. Uh-huh. Right. And that, and that yes. rock, rock I love that part, too. In fact, let me read that part to you. This is about being intimate. Verse 20, and the passion, it says it this way. This is so good. Behold, I'm standing at the door knocking. If your heart is open to hear my voice and you open the door within, I will come into you, into you, <laughs> and feast with you, and you will feast with me. That is so rich right there. How many churches in America have not invited and are cultivating the Holy yeah. Spirit and his presence in right. the services. Right. And he's on the outside knocking. Will you let me in? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Whew. And then for greater revelation, for greater insight, for greater wisdom, understanding, you know, we need to do that more. Yes. You know, no more, you know, if Holy Spirit's moving to do more songs, do it. Agree. You know, more, Agree. more prophetic Lingering. Words. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And lingering in his presence. Yes. Uh, the Asbury Revival. The college mm -hmm. kids in Asbury. Mm -hmm. They lingered on, in right. his presence. Yeah. Woo! Talk about a fire. Come on. That fire started that day because some hungry young people said, no, I want to go back. I want to I want to worship some more. And they yeah. just continued to worship and linger yeah. in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And revival broke out. People from all over the place came and yeah. flying in to Asbury College. Oh, my goodness. Wow. I think for Monday night, you know, that's happening. And yeah. just go, 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 cultivating that more. Yes. It's just going to draw, mm -hmm. you know, the, the spiritual mm -hmm. realm of life is mm -hmm. just going to draw people. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're going to be like, why am I going here? Why am I coming here? It's just cultivating that. Yeah, the you know, fire. calling them in. Holy yes. Spirit's calling them in. 
maybe we need to, to press into maybe we just need to open up the doors every Monday night. We have to find the, and it's going to be rough. Yeah. A, a harmony replacement that she yeah. led. Yeah. And she, along with Audrey, yeah. they ushered in. Yeah. They took us there. Yeah. And I'm not saying that somebody else can't. You know, on the on the idea of performance, there was no performance on Monday. No. Uh, no. In fact, God whacked us to the point where we couldn't even play. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to say that the Bible's clear that the plowman is worthy of his wages, and he also identifies that the hired hand cared more about himself than the chief. So people assess, is this a performance-based house? We have such professional musicians. We, you know, the point of the matter is, it's a posture of the heart. Yes. That they're giving God their best. Yes. The teachers are worthy of, yeah. their, and not all of our teachers in the house get paid, they do it yeah. voluntarily. Yeah. Yes. And so the whole point of the matter is, what we do, we do under the Lord, and we push the plow forward. Mm, we yeah. don't look at other people yeah. and base ourselves on performance, because exactly. yeah. none of us are like each other. Yeah. Right. And I'm right. called to a certain zone, Audrey's called to a certain yeah. zone, but together, yeah. yes. when we unite, what right. a powerful yeah. we fireball. We expand yeah. the foundation Hello. from yeah. heaven to come down. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Well, I'm ready to go there right now. So <laughs> come, on, come on. Worship's coming soon. Okay. So presence people love the presence of God, and they'll sell everything just to be in the presence and be with him. Presence people spend time in his presence daily. Presence people seek his face, while performance people seek a pretty space. Presence people have passion for him, and they, they cultivate that passion and keep that passion burning. I was thinking, you know, of a marriage a lot of times when I think about our fire with God and think about a marriage. How do you keep your marriage burning? Because yes, marriages, every relationship goes through seasons. May not be like it was right when you got married and everything was just so, whoa, you know, you're on fire for one another. So you get to places where you gotta work more. You gotta continue to study one another, get to know one another. Cause we also, as a married couple, we grow and we, we change. But my husband and I, we now go on a date pretty darn consistently. Actually, it's probably the most consistent thing we do. Every single week, every Thursday night, we go on a date. And I love it. I look forward to that Thursday every single week. It's, it's the best night of the week. Mm -hmm. And it's, a, it's been a game changer. It's a, it's a big deal. It has helped uh, you know, set our hearts back on fire for one another and just have that good talk time. And so it's no different with, with Jesus. We have to be cultivating and tending our fire and being aware of of things that might you know try to snuff out our fire sometimes that can even be people that just popped in my head sometimes there can be people in our lives that maybe have a tendency of snuffing out our fire and we have to be really careful about that and prayerful about that because a lot of times my merciful heart is oh but I got to keep witnessing to this person because they need me and but at the same time, you have to come to that place of, well, how much, whose influence is stronger? Whose fire is stronger? Because if there is, when you encounter this person or you spend time with this person and you feel like your fire goes out or, you know, if they're snuffing out your fire when you spend time with them, well, maybe you need to reevaluate the time that you're spending with that person. So just something to think about that just popped in my head. And on the, that same note, running with people, getting with people, spending time with people that are on fire for Jesus because their fire is going to catch on you and you're going to catch fire from their fire. So that's another way to keep your fire burning. <clears throat> so I want to I want to end with prayer for all of you. You know, there's a lot of things that can snuff out our fire. And sometimes they're really obvious, and sometimes they're not as obvious. And sometimes we don't even realize that, oh, wow, maybe I've kind of been going through the motions. Maybe I've been in kind of a, a lukewarm place. Or maybe you wouldn't say you're, you're here if, if this is cold and this is hot. And maybe you wouldn't say you're here, but maybe you're here, and you're, you're, trying, to, you're trying to catch fire. Um, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for everybody if you'll let me, because uh, we need the fire of God in this hour. We need to be burning on fire for him because he's the way. He is the way 
uh, that we're going to see our nation turn around. Where He's the way we're going to see the church be awakened and come back alive. He's the way we're going to save this generation. He's the only one that can save this generation. And they need to encounter a living God, not a dead God, not a lukewarm Christianity. They don't want it. They don't want the moderate. They're looking for someone who's different, who's on fire for God, who's going to lead them to a real Jesus, not a building. Amen. And so um, I guess here's my last question. I, I've been hearing this from the Lord and I've been ministering from it. The last question I'll ask and then we'll pray is, is he your medicine or is he your food? So is he the medicine that you run to when, you know, your body is aching or you haven't been taking care of yourself and you're, you, you run to him when you really, really need him because you've been away from him? Or is he your food that you come to daily and you eat with him and you eat of him and you drink of him, you drink of his spirit? Because just like good food mm -hmm. will nourish our physical body, so will the, the food of Jesus, the word, the manna of Jesus will nourish us and strengthen us. So when we come to a battle, we're strengthened and we're ready. We know how to approach it because we know who our God is and that he's already taken down every enemy, every giant. He's already overcome every contradiction that we could ever face and all these little contradictions that keep trying to come up in our nation and, and oppose the family and oppose the word of God, he's actually already conquered. So we just have to continue to stand in this, from this victorious place, really the revelation is all about being an overcomer and victorious in Christ, carrying the torch, enforcing the victory and growing that much stronger and powerful in the, in the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So let's pray. Um, yeah, let's let's actually let's repent. Let's all repent together. And you guys can just I guess repeat after me. Jesus, right now we repent. Jesus, Jesus. We repent, Lord, where we any times we've been lukewarm. We repent, Lord, when we have it ran to you. We repent, Lord, when we we haven't cultivated and stewarded the fire of our heart for you. We repent, Lord, when we have placed the contradiction uh, or we've made the contradiction bigger than who you are. So today, Jesus, I ask you to come and return to my heart and take number one seat. I thank you, Lord, that you've already overcome every single contradiction and any enemy that I would ever face. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Worship you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Places and you can take this home to your private time. There may be some places in your heart um, the, where unforgiveness has maybe tried to snuff out your fire, and um, maybe even whoever this is for could be all of us. Honestly, uh, we didn't even realize that there was another layer that there's more forgiveness that's available to us. I feel like there's an invitation to forgive. <clears throat> there's some people that maybe hurt us or wronged us that. Uh, the Lord is inviting us to forgive those people all over again. So I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for speaking to us. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you never stop pursuing us. 
You never stop pursuing us. You're faithful even when we're not faithful. We thank you, Lord, that you never give up on us. We love you, Jesus. Jesus, I see I'm just uh, releasing rest over every single one of you. Just that peaceful rest, the peace of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I see him lifting off um, just some, some heaviness that maybe was on some of your shoulders, maybe even a little bit of worry about some things that uh, you've been facing or just uh, walking walking with or whatnot and I just see Jesus lifting off some bricks off of some of your your shoulders right now. 